TV Productions. This is College Lacrosse Live coming to you from Archbishop Spalding High School just outside the Beltway. We have Denver traveling across to take on Duke. Two teams that have not left the top 10 this season. Thanks for joining us on Booker Corgan alongside the great Bob Shriver. Bob, for Denver, you got to love Noah Manning. It's the Manning Cats. Well, Noah is a Canadian. We're going to highlight a Canadian for each team. Terrific feeder, good with and without the ball. Um, they look for him, but a lot of leadership down at the attack position. And you see him on the inside. He's got hands like a moil when it comes to finishing in tight spaces. And then Andrew McAdory. Andrew, I love the way he plays. A true midfielder coming out of high school. Last year, uh, Duke played him at attack and did a great job. But with the addition of Josh Sawada to the attack group, they moved Andrew back to midfield. Powell Lacrosse brings us our players to watch for Duke. Those are two obvious ones. Well, Brennan O'Neill needs no introduction. That's a tort and an award winner. MVP of the World Games this past summer. The only thing that Brennan lacks is an NCAA championship. And then for Denver, Mr. Clutch, J.J. Silstrup. J.J. Silstrup, first game of the year and one of the great games of this season so far. The incredible comeback Denver orchestrated against Johns Hopkins, including J.J. scoring the tying goal with about a second on the clock and then the game winner in overtime. And A.J. Mercurio, he can get the ball off the ground and he, from Reno, Nevada, he knows how to gamble when he crosses the line. Well, A.J., as soon as he crosses the line, they love to push the tempo, and a lot of the reason they like to push the tempo going from defense to offense is A.J.'s ability to handle the ball and shoot it with authority. It is sure to be a fantastic matchup. Two teams with incredible star power meeting here in Baltimore. Booker Corrigan, Bob Shriver, right after this. College Lacrosse Live Series game number two as we have Duke and Denver. This is going to be a great one. There is Malcolm Cleveland for Denver and Patrick Jamison, the goaltender for Duke. Duke will be in the dark blue. Denver all white in the opening faceoff. That's going to be a plot line that will follow. Thanks for joining us as Nasa wins the first faceoff and Duke will have possession. Booker Corrigan, Bob Shriver bringing it to you. Bob, first possessions are key, but there's going to be a lot of them throughout the day. Well, two of the best face-off men in the country, Naso and Stathakis from Denver, both at about a 60% clip. Um, two of the best in the game. Duke on offense. Shot goes just wide. And it's backed up by Josh Zawada. Transferred out of Michigan and now joins some of his Hill Academy mates. Well, I talked about Josh being a Canadian. He's actually from Raleigh, North Carolina, but he did play his high school across in Canada. So we'll count him as a Hill Academy alum and a Canadian. You're slow pushing it down the end, and your reigning tour, Tom Winter, Brendan O'Neill drives right handed. Denver looking like they're quick to slide there. Williams pushes it up top, back to Sloat. Duke again, not able to get to that middle of the field credit the Denver defense right now for shutting the door. Slowed again, rolls back, throws it to a covered man who breaks through. Now he's got time room, bullseye. Hooper drives the boat, Chief. Bringing it, slinging it, stinging it. Duke's midfield. That's Max Sloat with his first goal. He's just a sophomore. Ben Johnson, he took the first shot, a freshman, playing with Andrew McAdory, a veteran, while only a junior, but a veteran. <laughs> McAdory does. It seems like he's been there for a long time, but he is just a junior. He, he plays with the experience of an old man. Stathicus uses his thighs to pick that one up. Stathakis from Culver Academy, uh, outstanding high school program out of Indiana. Naso from St. Anthony's, an equally incredibly gifted high school program from Long Island. Uh, we've got uh, stars from all over the yep. country. Denver is represented on their team with 20 players from 20 states and Canada. Amazing. That is, it's remarkable, the explosion of the game as Denver 
takes it for a quick NASCAR lap, and now it's back with Noah Manning, and Duke's defense creates a turnover. Henry Bard, number five, one of those guys who just came to Duke as a starter, which doesn't happen that often, the Lower Marion product. And they get the quick, easy clear up, up the box side. Aiden Denenza, a senior, another veteran on this, a, a veteran on this Duke team, and another young man from St. Anthony's High School, uh, clearly one of the top programs in the country. Balsamo pushes it along, back to Denenza, rounding out the midfield, number 23, Aiden McGuire. McGuire gets to the middle, throws back. And here is O'Neal. Side, speed, strength. Flag flies, did he touch the goal mouth, Bob? They're gonna say no. Goal by Brendan O'Neal. Well, a speed dodge yeah. on Benedetto. Once O'Neal gets inside you, he's just too big and strong. Going at about 230 pounds. Uh, you know, he's been a star since he was in the eighth grade. In the eighth grade, he started. He's a little limping off the field. Hope he's okay. Not happy about the way he is. Uh, that's gingerly. He's going to, it looks and like he might have hurt his hamstring. He's going down to see the trainer. That'll be an interesting development. We will keep an eye on it for you. And we're right back to the face off dot. Two nothing Duke. The Blue Devils fresh off a 10-4 loss to Syracuse, Bob. So you, you know you're gonna get a, a strong effort from them. And Denver comes out. Here's Richie Connell, four goals, one assist on the year. And he's gonna share it with Mick Kelly, local product from here at Calvert Hall. Had a great game, their last game against Ohio State where his brother Johnny actually played lacrosse. Mick had an unbelievable game with three goals last weekend in Columbus. Great possession play there by Noah Manning, number seven. And now it's back with Avery. Avery goes left, he throws back. Under dodge, shot Jameson with the leg save and a crease violation is gonna give the ball back to Duke and they wanna go. Not often you see a freshman starting in the goal for a high caliber team that Duke is, but Jamison's had a wonderful season so far. He is third in the nation in save percentage at over 61%. The nephew of the great Steve McGrath, who played his college lacrosse at Washington and Lee. Here's for, here is Sloat. And McAdory. Drawing the pole, Mercurio, an outstanding player for Denver. And some nice defense by Denver now as Sloat squares up on Ettinger. Sloat gets inside, dives in the crease, and that's gonna be a turnover. Duke now to clear, or yep. sorry, Denver. Very similar move to the one O'Neal scored on. Sloat got inside and just missed the cage before falling into the crease and a turnover. Long looping pass. McAdory arrives right at the same time. They're going to call him with a push. And Denver will have possession. And you'll see McAdory hustle off for the change. Look at the VIP area over there, Bob. Talk about some people who are happy. They spent the extra shekels on their VIP credentials. So glad to have Bonefish Grill feeding everybody over there. Denver right back at it. Head Ball. coach Matt Brown used to be the offensive coordinator for Denver. This is his first year as head coach, so he turned over those responsibilities to a Absolute veteran and Dave Metzbauer with seven national champions yeah. under his belt as an assistant coach. coach Six at Met Princeton and one at UNC. Coach Metzies had a blessed career. This is Carlson inside it. 
Bit of a desk pop right there. Backed up by Lampert. Lampert, nine goals, 13 assists. This is a great matchup. Broward, number 29, a returning first team All American, generally considered as one of the top two or three defensemen in the country for good reason. Definitely a candidate for the Schmeiser Cup. And shot clock Denver. below 10. Saved by Jameson. Lost the rebound momentarily, but it's gathered by Aiden McGuire, the sophomore out of St. Sebastian's. Duke has four players on their team from St. Sebastian's High School. The great Timmy Shea doing a good job coaching up there, helping out whatever he can. Number eight has replaced, number eight for Duke, excuse me, Jack. Pavendick has replaced Brennan O'Neill, who still has not stepped back on the field since that goal. Duke pushing around the outside. Great ball movement, great off-ball movement. Bam, shot, goal, 3-0. Aiden Duke. Denanza, just a turn. He fed off this check by the Den Denver defender and just used that guy's momentum to turn himself, really, and get a better angle and a really nice finish low and away. As we like to say, Bob, Aiden, he left the jag and he took the rolls. And if they ain't cutting, then you put them on foot patrol. Here it is, watch him absorb this check. Beautiful spin move, low and away shot. Tough save for Klebon to get a hold of. And Denver can thank Syracuse right now for the, the aggression with which Duke's playing. Duke, Midweek loss to Syracuse in which they, they didn't shine. And they're, they're a shiny team. Well, as everybody knows, it's awful tough to play in the dome. And Syracuse was ready to roll, but Duke looks like uh, they came out today with Fire. a little chip on yep. their shoulder after that loss. Kenny Brower now running for his life goes far side, and they will massage it over midfield in the form of Andrew McAdory. Here's Johnson, number four ranked recruit according to Inside Lacrosse this year, just a freshman. Slope gets it behind. Now it's Zawada all the way in that far corner to McAdory. McAdory right to right split. Great defense by Chris Caldwell right there for Denver. Well, O'Neal's back in the game. I'm sure Coach Danowski's happy to see that. I'm sure Matt Brown's not. <laughs> Inside shot, save Cleveland and corralled by the Denver defense. And now they will look to clear. They have an open short stick right here outside of the box, and they will get the clear. And their shorties and the pole, we talked about uh, AJ Mercurio, they will push the tempo with their shorties. A couple of their shorties are former attackmen. <laughs> And That's they can, something. no, it is. And they can uh, absolutely, they like to take the ball to the goal. They scored a couple transition goals in the Ohio State game. A little momentum in the substitution game, but to no avail as Duke comes away with the bobbled pass. And here come the Blue Devils. The stutter step. Papendick. Number eight in for Duke. Denenza, perfectly comfortable. Looking for a two-man game, pick and roll. Pushes it to the side. Balsamo gets it all the way around, and now it's Zawada, the Michigan transfer. And five on five. Here the uh, the Duke shorty stayed on the field, being covered by an offensive mini number 21 for Denver, Nick Kelly, and their intent to just let it play five on five. 
And now you see Mick Kelly, who, I mean, a tremendous athlete coming out of Calvert Hall. His father, John Kelly, played at Washington College, if I'm not mistaken, Bob. And ends up looking for somebody, now gets it to Zawada. Bounce pass between the legs and the dive, can't save it. And it's gonna be Denver ball. Denver clearing up the box side, which you don't see too often. And they're doing it with ease. Good ball movement all the way behind to Lampert. And now it's up with Tortolani. Tortolani is a large young man, about 6'3". From Baltimore. His dad, uh, Tortolani, got recruited by Coach Tierney. And his dad played for Coach Tierney while he was at Princeton. Justin Tortolani. Correct. Scored a couple goals in his day. Shot goes just wide. 34 on the shot clock. Yet to see J.J. Silstrom get too involved in the proceedings. Well, he's getting everybody's attention since his significant start this year. Here's Kelly leaning in, shot just wide. And he's gonna say the Denver player was out of bounds on the backup, so it's gonna be Duke ball with four minutes to go here, first quarter. So far, it's been a lot of Duke and a little bit of Denver. And it's those little missteps, like sure. the guy backing up the goal is out of bounds, so he doesn't count anymore, so Duke gets the, the easy clear. Yeah, and the first turnover, Denver guy was trying to backdoor his man, and the guy that threw him the ball didn't recognize that, and the ball went out of bounds. Just little, little mistakes. Ben Johnston gets it behind. Here's Zawada. Oh, breaking ankles like Kathy Bates. Goodness. And a beautiful <laughs> feed across the goal mouth to Ben Johnson and missed the cage. Denver did this a lot against Ohio State. They pushed the tempo like crazy, clearing the ball, and then they throw it away. Coach Brown cannot be happy. Yeah. And we've all been in that spot where you, you can't clear the ball. It's a kind of a helpless feeling as Zawada carries behind. McAdory will be balanced out with Johnston. O'Neal staying on the sideline. When he came back in that last two possessions ago, he was coming out of the box. See if they don't try to employ that strategy. Uh, I don't think they want to risk an injury to Brennan O'Neal. There's a lot of lacrosse left to be played this year. Duke still moving the ball with tremendous per precision. Shot goes wide, that shot by Dyson Williams. Dyson Williams, an off-ball Canadian finisher, left-handed. Uh, you don't want him with the ball anywhere near the goal yeah. mouth. Here's Zawada, comes off the pick. Shot clock below 20. Papendick guarded by the short stick, goes right side. And now it's gonna bound towards the midline, saved momentarily with the shot clock's at six. Denver comes up with it. Great ground ball by Adam Hangland. Hangland might get a time, nope, 158 to go first quarter. Denver yet to dent the twine. This is Stephen Avery, balanced out with Mick Kelly. Duke has some uh, outstanding defensive midfielders. This is Charlie O'Connor, used to play offense. From Northern Virginia, Paul VI, on a high recruit coming out of high school. This is Manning looking for some help. 
Get some help, a little bad approach angle gives Avery a step, but unable to use it. There's... Now it's Lampert, left hand, looking to feed. Quick shot goes off, and that's gonna be Denver ball, good call. 13 on the shot clock. One full minute on the game clock. Duke's playing great defense so far. The shots that they have gotten have been, that one was a little too far out. Bad angle shots so far. They haven't uh, really had any, or too many great opportunities. Did we get a reset? Looked like it may have hit Jameson in the thigh, but I guess they're gonna say it did not. That's gonna go to a violation. And Duke will take possession far side. And Denver, they need to make something happen in transition in the riding game some way, somehow. This is Denenza. Here comes O'Neal out of the box with a shorty covering him. That's a bad matchup. If he can get the ball, nice job by number 27 from Denver, preventing Dan Anderson preventing O'Neal from getting that ball. And they try to force it down to him, passes at his feet. And that's gonna give us 4.6 seconds in the quarter. They will send it down towards the goal mouth. Sometimes five seconds is enough time to score a goal, but it's enough time to draw a penalty box. Neither of those things happened. It's 3 nothing. Duke over Denver. You're watching College Lacrosse Live. We're at Archbishop Spalding with two top 10 teams. Well, you can see out there on the field right now, Denver is actually wearing white jerseys. This is actually their home game. And they traveled from Colorado to be here, but Denver is so used to this. They've already been on the East Coast. They had scrimmages in February against Navy on the East Coast. They came their first game against Johns Hopkins was in, on the East Coast. They traveled to Ohio State, coming here to play Duke. And then next week, they're turning around and coming back to the East Coast to play Villanova. So this is nothing new for the Pioneers. They certainly are road warriors, and Coach Tierney proved you can win a title that way, as did Coach Corrigan at Notre Dame. They travel a little bit, too. Sure. 2015, Denver's First team west of the Mississippi to win a national championship, yep. and then uh, Notre Dame last year became the second team. Are they west of the Mississippi at Indiana? <laughs> Come on, Booker, give us some geography. No, they're not. Okay. We consider them a west team there, <laughs> yes, right? they are. Nice ground ball. Face-off win, O'Neal gets it low. Oh, great save by Kleeman. You want some turkey with that stuffing? See if, oh, oh, oh. See if he doesn't go to the goal. They clearly want to create some transition. Ooh, nice ooh. save by Jamison. Wow, and like a great goalie, you make a save, you get the ball out of your stick. Average goalies like to cradle the ball, cradle the ball, say, look, I made a save. Great goalies get it out of your stick. They know you made a save. Great Den play by Jamison. Yeah, and Denver's very comfortable in that situation. I think he might have thrown that over to the righty attack and might have had a little bit better shot. Here's McAdory, Sloat, and Johnston round out the midfield for Duke. McAdory, a little bit of a step slow. Cleveland kicks it out, and McAdory comes away with the rebound. Wow, and a nifty little backside flip there, Bob. I saw McAdory play a couple games in high school. He yeah. can do everything. He's an outstanding player. Zawada looking to turn the corner. Johnston. And it's back to McAdory. Sometimes when you back up to set up a dodge, you're giving the defense an opportunity to get set. McAdory rolls back for his right hand. And still quick as a hiccup. Gets the pass away. Johnston shot. I walked across the field before the game, and I went past Johnston. He's a horse. <laughs> There's a bunch of them out there. Oh my big lord, boys. some big, big young men. Listed at 6'1", 195. I, 
Even from up here, he looks a little bigger than that. Johnson rolls back, lefty shot, goal. Four nothing, Blue Devils. Sting in that corner for all the right reasons, gonna set up shop up atop the four seasons. Well, you're overplaying his right hand for good reason. The Illinois product came east to go to Avon Old Farms. Um, and this is just a very simple, you're overplaying his right hand, he split back to his left and stuck this thing in the upper corner. Beautiful move. Oh, painted the corner. And we are right back at the faceoff dot. Two guys are going to get to see each other a lot. Stathicus pushes it back. And now we get a nice ground ball pickup by the Denver LSM. And here we go, Denver. Great ground ball by Ryan Giles. Senior from Landon School right down the street. Right outside of the nation's capital. This is Carlson. Booker, one thing we're seeing in this game, both teams have seven grad students that play many minutes. So there's a lot of experience out on this field. Here's Silstrup getting all the way over. Now it's Manning. And they're moving the ball with tremendous fluidity. Hussey carrying behind. Guarded by Delgado. Hussey tries to get a step, gets thrown to the ground. No flag, because it wasn't a foul, but... Ooh. And there's a great double by that Duke defense. Kenny Brower, beautiful double. The man turned his back on Brower, and he doubled from behind him. You'll see that a lot, especially at the college game. These guys are so yeah. good, so sophisticated defensively. We'll look for that again tonight. Watch if somebody's carrying the ball sometimes up the field. The defender that's behind him will sneak up behind him like Broward just did then. Did you just say tonight? I mean, I know you go to bed early now in your senior <laughs> years, but I don't know that it's quite the blue plate special just yet, Bob. It's 2.30. Uh, two <laughs> well, it's p.m. <laughs> it's, uh, carries behind in the evening hours of Bob Schreiber's day. And now it's Tyson. Williams. Charles Balsamo. Balsamo played in that All-American senior game. Outstanding. Had a great year last year as a freshman. Great check, but Zawada holds on to possession. So many of these players played in that All-American underclass event, including this young man, Brendan O'Neill. And great save by Cleveland. Went down low on that one. Manning, just ready to chill, gets it to Mick Kelly. Always been a guy who's created a little bit for him, but they still have yet to cash in. Well, he's got Denenza, an offensive mid. He's stuck on the field trying to do something, oh, and Denenza <laughs> throws a rusty gate on him. <laughs> Coach Brown might want to, next chance he gets, call a T.O. and settle his team down. I think he's hoping that they can play through this early yes. malaise, but so far, not happening. Duke now trying to play a little bit of a substitution game. And onto the field is Ben Johnston. 11 goals, four assists coming into today. Joined by Macadori. 16 goals on the season. And now Brennan O'Neill back behind the cage. Rollback, throwback, great pass by McAdory, but it's knocked down by an even better play. Bodies on the ground, the refs are letting him play a little bit. Cleveland now looking to clear. Great play by Jimmy Freehill, number 15, got a stick in the passing lane, put that ball on the ground and picked it up himself. Transition opportunity. See how much they milk it. 
Coach Metzbauer told us before the game that they love, and I mentioned that earlier, they love to push that transition with A.J. Mercurio and some of these other short stick defensive middies that are highly capable of playing offense. Tortolani. Throws back. A little shake and bake, crazy Ivan. Shot goes whistling wide. Shot that time by Cody Malowski. Plenty of time on the shot clock. And a good decision there by Lampert as he was fading away from the goal. Jameson was kind of encouraging him to shoot. Shot blocked away by Jameson for post. They didn't reset the yeah, shot clock. I guess Jameson that. didn't get a piece of it. Oh, a wraparound goal and the flag. The flag's going to be a hold. But there you go, folks. Denver's on the board. Great play by Malowski, who just uh, took a shot earlier. See, saw that shot clock winding down. Watch this. He gets to the goal line extended and dives a little forward to increase his angle. And dunks this thing past goaltender Jamison one-handed. Beautiful play. He does. He just accelerates. Gets upfield. And we're back. Two of the unbelievably important players in this game, Nasso and Stathicus, right back at the face-off dot. These guys are going to get so sick of each other. Because <laughs> they both fight for the ball. I mean, it, it's not a quick face-off. They don't mind scrapping around in there. Well, Naso is the returning face-off first-team All-American from last year. Stathicus, member of the U.S. under-21 team that played in Ireland this past summer to another victory on the world stage. And here is Naso, right. And it's a little confusing. It's usually the under-19 team, but yes. because of COVID situations, they had to wait two years for those guys to get an opportunity to represent their country. Slow, right, right alley. Pushes behind. Dyson Williams right back to him. Picked by O'Neal, hard outside shot. Cleveland gets to it, but the rebound squirts out in front. See if they can't get it to the goaltender. Nice ground ball. Another nice ground ball by Jimmy Freehill. Jimmy Freehill's scooping him. Stathic is still on the field. I suspect he's going to go for a change rather quickly. Neither coach has used the timeout yet. You have two each half, and uh, you don't use them, you lose them. This is Lampert. Goal line extended. Gets a little step, and the flag flies. It, it, it was a pushing into a stumbling into a, into a flag. Lampert, that's a nice play by him. He's incredibly quick. He started that dodge way out in the corner of the box, and he gets his uh, feet moving. He gets, he got to the front of the goal, and he actually lost his balance a little bit. Yep. You know, as he was getting pushed, I think if he had been able to watch this, I think he loses his balance right here just a little bit. Well, the push did it. He was going to get to the front of the goal. Good opportunity for Denver to not. It's second goal in a row here on Extra Man. Starting in a circle. He'll cut into maybe a 1-4-1. One, one. Decoy cut all the way around. Outside shot, save Jamison. Not a great shot yeah. in my opinion. Not much of an angle. He did shoot it overhand, which is good, but Jamison. Uh, he made quick work of that and no rebound. You'll no, sorry, you'll notice this midline is white, and it is a little confusing. The Denver guy was lucky that another one of his players stayed on side for him because he stepped over that white midline. A little confusing because yep. the rest of the field is lined in blue. You can see O'Neal's <laughs> coming down here. He's inside the box now. There's that blue line. Big outside shot. 
just a bit, just a bit outside. Now, Brendan's had a little trouble getting that shot on net. He was one for 11 in, in the Syracuse game on Wednesday night. Jonathan instant inside feed. Cleveland comes up with it, gets it to the short stick, and he's going to go up the far side. And not much opposition there for him. Anderson does the clearing, and now it's Lampert. You'll see down there, number 16, A.J. Mercurio is staying down on the offensive end as a decoy, <laughs> hoping to kind of open the field up a little bit, play five on five. Makes everybody's slide package a little different. Yep. And now he's the pick guy. And he's gonna still play a little cat and mouse towards the midfield line. Coach Caputo's son, Jake number six, veteran at the defensive midfield. His dad's the uh, defensive coordinator for Duke. Here's Coach Brown with his first TO. Timeout for him. It's a family business at Duke. You got John Donowski, the head coach, Mount Donowski, one of the assistants. Ron Caputo, assistant coach, Jake Caputo out there on the field. Duke, four to one over Denver. College across line. Day that they have 54,000 applicants for about 1,700 positions. That narrows the playing field a little bit. Yeah. I coached with Sam on an under 19 team in 2003. He's wonderful guys. Tyler's mother is the head volleyball coach at Duke. Just won her 700th game this year. Oh, nice. Congratulations, Jolene. Jolene. Denver with possession. 4.18 to go first half. And they trail 4-1. to one. They'll just throw this ball in the corner. There's only three seconds on the shot, and now it's on one. The shot clock. <laughs> and let's see if Duke doesn't clear this, and maybe Coach Stanowski will Burn use one. one of his timeouts. See Denver trying to make them take as much time as possible. They're I don't understand. The shot clock, uh, they fixed yeah. it. The shot clock was at 55. They missed 10 seconds in there. They cleared it in time. Duke on offense. Will Williams with it. And now they're running Josh Zawada out of the box. Young coach Danowski, Matt, mixing it up a little bit. Trying to create a matchup. Full head of speed for Josh, but he opts to give it back. And here's Balsamo. There's Coach Danowski yep. didn't like what he was seeing, so he called a timeout. Now he says no. It was a mistake. <laughs> Official's nice. mistake. And now the referees are going to clear it up with Coach Matt Brown, who just has a question. And not a terrible time to use a timeout, but he opted not to. There's only 18 seconds on the shot clock. Inside shot, kicked away by Kleeman. Cleveland is doing unbelievably well to hold Duke to four goals. Although I will mark up at Syracuse held on the four goals for the whole game. So. <laughs> Denver with a successful clear. Nick Kelly back on the field, getting the pole. Yep. As well he deserves. He, he has certainly blossomed into the best version of himself this season. Kelly. Carries all the way behind. And now it's Connell. Connell pivots inside feed. Another Canadian, Richie Connell, spent a couple years at the University of Richmond before transferring to Denver. Patient offense, shot clock at 23 now. Nice speed dodge again, and a save by Jamison. He 
best player on the field so far. And now he's getting some lumber as a reward for it. And the Duke fans like it. Easily over 2,000 people here today on a beautiful sunny day just south of the Baltimore Beltway. Zawada up top to McAdory. And now they'll take the time. <laughs> McAdory's like, I had something cooked up. Well, he I looks, had something cooked up. He looks up. He's been getting the pole all game. He looks up, and he's got a shorty covering him. And Coach Zanowski called a timeout. It's Duke four, Denver one. 135 left in the first half. Looks like um, Denver is coming out. They're showing zone principles. Yeah, now Curio stepping out on McAdory. A very sloughing man-to-man -man defense with 40 seconds on the shot clock. I don't think oh. there was intent to have a shorty covering the reigning Tuaraton winner. Yeah. Some physical play. Zawada takes it to the cage. It's in the crease. In the crease, and it's going to be Denver ball with I 103. I think Cleveland got a piece of that. Cleveland has played great so far. They're going to be offsides potentially. And does the right thing. Let's see if Matt Brown calls a timeout. I tell you what, I've been thrilled with the way Denver's defense has upped their game. Chris Caldwell, the long stick middy, is doing a great job for him. As is number 31, Jack D. Benedetto. Making something happen in a split second. A lot of Culver Academy grads. The great John Posner did such a great job there before he went to Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville was scheduled to have a game Saturday against Boys Latin, and the game got called off because of the weather that just was all over the East Coast yesterday. Anybody that was in it knows full yeah. well how miserable it was. Denver going for the invert clock now at 30 seconds and a half. Being very patient. Clock now at 19. Plenty of time for Lambert. It was lefty, comes back righty. Game clock at seven. Caputo switches on to him. No shot before the buzzer. What defense by Duke. And a little reluctance to, to take a shot on Patrick Jameson. And the goaltender for Duke's been very hot in this first half. Second half, Denver in white, Duke in blue tops, white shorts. Stathic is quick scoop, but he, he procedural the Duke guy left early. That is Brandon O'Neill. And Stathic has made a huge mistake there. He slowed down on that ground ball and let Naso get in on his hands. They got lucky. Duke was out of the box too early. Good to see Brandon O'Neill back on the field. Comes into the game with 30 goals, 20 assists on just this season. Denver back on offense. Triple team comes. Flag flies. And somehow Carlson escapes with possession. Little backhander. And it goes in. Wow. Ask and you shall receive. How about those two goals now for Denver? The one-handed shot. This is Carlson coming from behind the goal watch. He shoots this backhanded. He's got it in his right hand, and he gets turned a little bit. It looks like he just dumps it sideways, and I think he uh, caught Jamison maybe a touch asleep. Let's see. Yeah. And you see Jamison kick it out, and he goes to the end line. He he caught a piece with his leg. You see him whip his head around. This is a great classic. Make it, take it. They scored a goal. Look on this face off. Man up. Man up, face off. Denver has three guys on this midline. Duke with only two. Stathicus will try to keep the ball to any one of his wing players. Oh, and he moved too early. And Stathicus jumped early. Credit Mesa. 
and just, you know, having the poise. And McAdory comes right out of the box to take possession. He is going to go behind the goal. No doubt about it as Mercurio lays some lumber on him, that's for sure. The Duke, uh, the Denver defense could be a little bit more aggressive here, although you don't want to double team somebody like McAdory with all this space out in the middle of the field. He can just run by a double team and create something that Denver doesn't want. You'll see number one is the backup man for the Denver defense, Jake Edinger, another grad student, three sport athlete in high school, we football and basketball. Kids. Yep. Just great to see. Johnston still killing off a little bit of time. And now Caputo will come out. Dyson Williams will replace him. And Duke has success with that jump on the faceoff. That, that it's a killer. Yep. And McAdory gets it quickly to Slope. Slope left-handed gets a bit of an edge. McAdory, crazy Ivan towards the top of the box, and now retreats. Now the only negative for Duke. O'Neal. That ball had a vapor trail behind it with no shot clock left. Right, well, the only negative for Duke was they did a great job eating up the rest of that penalty, but when they were all even, they only had about 20 seconds, and they had to get that shot off. O'Neal missed the cage, Denver ball. O'Neal, I mentioned in the first half, he's been off shooting here in the last uh, game and a half. Had a bad shooting game against Syracuse. And so far here today, he's only found the net twice with about five shots taken. Casey Wilson out of British Columbia avails himself for the clear. And now it's Stephen Avery and gets it to Mick Kelly. That's a penalty. And he blows up the pick, ball flies in the air, and now Duke gathers. And that's going to be a full minute, I would imagine. That's on Jake Wilson. He just pulverized this guy on the pick. Uh, they're pretty much going to call that any time. See how much might, he gets here. It might be a full minute, non-releasable. Refs are saying that cross check hit him across the chest, never made contact with the helmet. So it's just going to be a one minute releasable penalty. Let's see if uh, Denver can do a better job than they did on their first extra man opportunity. They start in a circle, but as we like to say as coaches, nobody ever does anything out of a circle. They always cut into something else. Little flips. Nice pressure on yeah. the ball carrier. They slowed their movement on this extra man out a little bit by pressure. Overhand shot, Jameson tracks it well, and just unable to connect on the man up opportunity. And now Caputo will attempt to wheel and deal. And they have one second to get it over and they succeed. 80 second shot clock, and when it gets to 60, you have to have the ball over midfield. Now another questionable shot, I think, on that extra man. Mm -hmm. You would prefer to get a better look. Both shots on their extra man have come from about 15 yards out. Duke was guilty of an illegal procedure turnover. Back to Denver. And Denver right back on offense. They scored the only goal of this quarter so far. Penalties released. This is Carls. Mick Kelly just doesn't get tired. He gets tired of looking up every time he has the ball and the pole's <laughs> covering him though. That is true. Manning, a little shake and bake on the far side. And Lampert so far off in the corner that his man was free to go double. Lampert just wants to get up ahead of Steen because he's so fast. McKelly 
Great save, save. Jameson. Poised beyond his year, Jam yeah. Jameson is. Just a freshman. He handled that very, very hard shot by Mick Kelly, made it look easy, which is extremely yeah. frustrating if you're a shooter. You get what you think is a great 15 yard step down and the goalie makes it look easy. Patrick Jameson, you better hit the bullseye, the kid don't play. Samo gets it to Tenenza. And now it's back with Papadick. Denenza from St. Anthony's, Balsamo from Shamanhad. Bitter, bitter rivals running <laughs> midfield together. Yeah. <laughs> Zabata turns the corner, save. Kleban doesn't know where it is. Defense comes to his aid. Kleban with a nice save to start his third quarter. Looks like a little reluctant to go over right there. Was Di Benedetto. This is a potentially nice matchup. They got Balsamo stuck on defense. Denver does. He's going to be able to get off the field. No, he's not. There's Mercurio. <laughs> Close to a moving pick. And now Balsamo will get off. Referee Richard Montgomery McGee here in a little bit. And Denver with a chance to pull within one. Opportunity and just wide. And 16 seconds on the shot clock as Lampert will inbound. And now we're No reset, the referee was very firm that that ball did not hit the goal. The goalie or the... Lampert looking to get upfield, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Rolls back, right-handed shot, goal! Threading the needle! Great defense by Brower, he forced Lampert back behind the goal, watch. Lampert be using his speed as he turns places this shot just past Jamison. Jamison was in good position, watch. He gets up far enough above the goal line extended and is able to turn, gets free of Bauer, Bauer just a little bit. Bauer's not able to direct him back behind the goal. Lampert sticks this thing up in the corner. Beautiful play. Denver, both goals this half. And a great ground ball on the ensuing faceoff, and Denver will have possession. Zigzag, comes out righty out. Goal line extended against Caputo. And Denver still looking for that matchup and then they want to exploit it and they don't. That is outside the goal. We call it a mom goal because it gives us a chance to thank all the great lacrosse moms out there. Big wind up, but that, sh that shot was so far right, I think Michael Moore is gonna do a documentary about it. Well, there's questions here again. If they reset the shot clock to 60, and they're comfortable that they made the right call. Plenty of time. Denver possession still 53 seconds. When it gets reset, after a possession, it doesn't reset to 80 seconds, it resets to 60. Lampert gets the change he wants now on the short stick. Jitterbug's behind, gets off his knees and moves it quickly. Now inside, 
Bodies hitting the turf, ball in the air. Possession Denver for right now. What a play by Jack Tortolani. Good gravy. And he will hustle off to the cheers of the Denver faithful. The Pios. Shot clock down below, 20. Avery, he has a clear view of the shot clock at seven. Has to turn the corner, double comes, great time for a double. Showed that earlier, Bauer, Brower recognized that the ball carrier had his back to him, he came from back below the goal line, beautiful double behind him. Zawada gets it up top. And Duke now with possession up 4-3. So things have changed a little bit. Oftentimes, Booker, offensive players are told to cut when they see the back of the helmet of the guy covering them. Well, defensive players are told to double when they see the back of a helmet in front of them. Here's O'Neal behind, gets it to Zawada. And they're all the way around. And here's Sloat. Max. Long feed way across. Oh, and an absolute rip. Freaking on brothers every way like MJ. I got to say, today was a good day. Johnston. He put both cheeks into that one. Second goal of the day for Johnston. Nice feed across by his running mate, Slope, with a step down for Johnson. He buries it. Duke back up by two. Lost the momentum for a moment in time, but they certainly found a way to get back past Malcolm Cleveland, the Denver goaltender. On a beautiful day here, just outside the Baltimore Beltway, Archbishop Spalding. Hot, sloppy mess. Henry Bard comes up with it. And Denver steals it right away. Great play, anticipation by Casey Wilson. And Wilson gets it quickly to Noah Manning. That time, Stathicus scooped through that ball and kept it alive. Naso had a a half a step on it, but Stathic is, by not slowing down, going after a ground ball. All those young players, one of the first things they're taught is how to scoop a ground ball, but they always have to remember, don't stop when you're chasing a ground ball. Scoop through it. Yep. Try to get away from anybody that's chasing after you. Denver right back on offense. McKelly, shot just wide. A.J. Silstrup has been very quiet in this game, Booker. I think Denver would love to see him get a little bit more involved in the offense. Here's Kelly again. Shares it up top with Avery. Kelly still minded by the long stick. Stutter steps his way to a bit of an opening. Loops a feet across the top, inside, and stripped from behind it. Here comes a fast break for the Devils. But look at the hustle by Manning. And now Denver with an attackman stuck back on the defensive end of the field. Something very unusual there. Denver came down in a fast break and they were running a left-handed fast break, primarily because Brennan O'Neill's a lefty, Dyson Williams is a lefty, and it makes sense to try to bring that ball down the left side of the field and throw it back to O'Neill to see if he can't create really quality fast break defense by the Pios. Shot bounces over the cage, no reset. And here's McAdory. Johnston running downhill. 
tries to throw it back to McAdory, and that is going to be over and back against the Blue Devils, and the Pios look to capitalize. Mercurio passes inside the ball, picked up by Henry Bard, the Lower Marion product, gets it to McAdory very quickly. Six on five. Oh, Big great. save by Cleveland. Great Big save, save by Cleveland. That's a huge save. Talk about getting a couple of hop steps into your 12 yarder. We have seven seconds to get it over the midline. And Duke seems to be waiting for him there. And they do just in time. <laughs> Great play by Carlson to avail himself. Great crowd on hand. Thank you so much to the folks at Corrigan Sports, especially Ryan Corrigan, Lee Corrigan, the godfather himself, Joe Kerrigan, the great Colin McClellan, Andy Biello, and Carrie Ann Allen. Here we go, Denver. Got a shot goal. Ask and you shall receive, Bob. Joshua Carlson, yeah, oh yeah. big kid and a big shooter, just gets to the middle of the field. Another individual, we've had nine goals scored in this game, seven of them by great individual efforts. Here's Carlson, just feeds the pressure, gets his hands free, throws that low and away. And you look at the goaltender for Duke, James, and there it looked like he didn't really move. He didn't know where it was gonna come out. Tough to find the release point. Stathicus, they so in the scrum, Stathicus pushes it to himself and now has an open man. Two in a row, Stathicus and they so had to draw, but Stathicus beat him to it. Ooh. <laughs> Throw it to Stathicus in a little traffic and you might end up with a ground ball. Coach Brown had a chance to call a timeout there, elected not to. Stathicus again. With the ball. That time Great he did. <laughs> that time Coach Brown <laughs> did. He didn't want to lose that possession. And he actually made the easy flip to, to Lamper. We got a 5-4 game here at Spalding College across Live. And wait till we get Notre Dame Cornell in April. I know he's not on your screen right now, but Brendan O'Neill is back in the game for Duke. Uh, and his left hamstring is wrapped a little bit more heavily than it was. He's also, it looks like he's got a little wrap. Yeah, I guess that's the hamstring wrap right above his knee. Here's Avery. Shot clock still above 40, plenty of time, and 57 seconds in the third quarter. Now here's another one of represented the great state of Tennessee. Avery won two Tennessee State Championships as a as an athlete in the Volunteer State, one of 20 different states represented on the Denver roster. Tennessee, crazy. They do it. It's everywhere. Mick Kelly, play clock at 29, shot clock at there it is inside. Shot clock at nine, and a crease violation is going to turn it over to Duke with 26.4 in the quarter. And Denver had retreated all their midfielders, so it's an easy clear for Duke. Duke coaches yell and go. We're under De 10. Denen's a high, hard shot gathered by Kleban, and it gets knocked down, but now up the field, and Jamison will gather it and that'll bring about the end of the third quarter with one quarter left. We have a one goal game, a low scoring affair. Credit the goaltenders, credit the defenses. Heading into the fourth quarter, Booker Corgan, Bob Schreiber bringing it to you from Archbishop Spaulding on a sunny blue sky day. Stathicus wins the fourth quarter faceoff. He's on a bit of a roll right now, Bob. Showed great determination on two draws that he lost, keeping that ball alive for his team. Booker, we've talked a lot about the fact that 
most of the goals scored in this game. Seven out of the nine have been individual efforts. I think that's a product of uh, two defenses that are extremely good. Not just the close defenders, a long stick, but their short stick defensive middies on both teams are excellent. Silstrop number five. Quiet most of the afternoon, but also occupying some Duke defenders while being quiet. Lampert definitely doesn't have a size advantage, but he's trying to get the leverage advantage. Great pass up top shot. High and wide. That was Noah Manning. From Tortellani. Big, strong kid. On the roster, Tortellani's listed at 6'3", 200. He's being covered by Caputo. On the other hand, who's listed at 5'11", 185. And now we got another game of Muckle breaking out here. Hits going. Shot just wide, and Jameson's going to get the back up. That's a, that's a tough one, but you got to reward the kid who scoops the ball out of that kind of pack. Patrick Jamison, again, the nephew of the great Steve McGrath. And now Duke with possession and a one goal lead. And it's gotten itchy. Here's number two, Andrew McAdory. With speed, gets it over to O'Neill. O'Neill seems to be running fairly well. Left hamstring injury, we believe. Shot goes wide. 41 on the shot clock. If you're anywhere near Long Island University in April for the Notre Dame Cornell game, get there. Big win by Cornell yesterday over Yale. There's Johnston. Lots of zigzag. Ball tipped. Zawada comes up with the ground ball. Feed shot goal. And that is Dyson Williams doing Dyson Williams things. Catching the ball with your feet moving and your hands free, Bob. If you don't think that's awesome, you need awesome lessons. Well, there's a great ground ball by Zawada. Dyson Williams, we talked about him. This is a Hill Academy connection. Dyson Williams recognizes it, makes a beautiful cut. Look at that kind of backdoored his man, faked like he was going behind the goal and swept back in front, stuck his left hand. So Wada put it right on his stick and uh, we talked about it earlier. Dyson Williams in front of the goal was really not a fair fight. He's got hands like a moil, Bob. Stavikas. That's the second time Duke's been guilty of coming out of that box too early without possession. It, it's a turnover, giving it to Denver. Two face, goal lead now. Yeah, and the faceoffs in the second half have been in Denver's favor, and that's helping keeping them McKelly, in the game. McKelly squared up top center. Goes lefty, comes back righty, and gets it to Avery. Avery swim move right alley. Still doing a good job of sharing everything. Sigourney, so number 34, behind. Pios, 27 now on the shot clock. Couple hop steps, and Jamison goes down to make the save. Patrick Jamison might be your player of the game right now. Tyler Carpenter, he plays a no. lot of pole. He's usually on the wings on face-offs because of his ability to pick up ground balls, but they've asked Tyler Carpenter to cover A.J. Silstrup today, and uh, so far we haven't said his name too no. often. So often that you forgot it's J.J. 
not AJ. <laughs> Sorry, it's AJ Mercurio <laughs> and JJ Silstrom. Yeah. Zawada. A little jitterbug. And pulls it right back to where he was. Great pass on the inside, but unable to be corralled. That that could have led to something, but just a little high on the pass. Denver now set to clear clock at 10.20 in the game. Here's Carlson. You know, earlier today you were watching uh, and doing the Archbishop Spalding against St. Thomas Aquinas a School from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they were playing high school federation rules. And anybody that's watching this game, when you cross the midline in Federation game, you have to get it in the box within 10 seconds. In NCAA rules, you cross the midline and you don't have to put it in the box. You, but you need to cross the midline within 20 seconds of your yep. possession. Shot clock at 30. Plenty of time to operate. Lampert looking to feed at this point. Skips it. Another hard shot well over the cage, and Lampert now guarded by Henry Bard. Lampert gets the pick. Now they have their defender hung up just momentarily, and they force it in. That's a crease violation, and that's going to turn the ball over to the Blue Devils. Super defense by the Blue Devils. One thing when you're sliding, the most important place to make sure you're protecting is the crease, and they did an outstanding job that time. Tortolani fed it inside. Duke had it covered up. Denver guy stepped in the crease. Turnover. Here's Sloat. And Andrew McAdory, number two. We've seen him plenty. He's got speed for days. Zawada. All the way over here is Johnston. Johnston righty dodge and gets just man shoved by Wilson. McAdory back with it. Now it's O'Neal. O'Neal spins for his dominant left hand. And it's back to McAdory. It's happened a bunch today. All of a sudden you look up and there's Less than 20 seconds on the shot clock. Both teams really playing great D. Oh, 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 oh. No need to slide there. Denver's guilty of sliding to a man who was not in a threatening situation. And if you see this, when you slide to McAdory's eyes, you basically make the play for him. He's got to throw this ball over to Max Sloat. Steps down with his uh, natural left hand watch. Somebody's coming to McAdory there. You slid to his eyes. Slokes gets his hand free. Puts the Blue Devils up by three. Yeah, McAdory's going to make that pass 99 times out of 99. Staticus still doing work at the X. I'll tell you, they've been spoiled with great faceoff guys when you go from Trevor Baptiste <laughs> yeah, to Alex Staticus. Staticus. Good gravy. Manning gets it to Kelly. This is a big possession for Denver. 740 left. Something positive. Trying to push it behind. And this is now Manning again. It's Will Fusoli. I think that's one of your St. Sebastian players yeah. you talked about earlier. There are a plethora of them on. Oh, great play by Lampert. Dunk you very much. The beast in me is caged by frail and fragile bars. Look, look at the placement of this. This is all about how much you practice. Lampert gets up in front of the goal just a little bit. Watch where he shoots this ball. He shoots that ball inside the goalie's ear. He's got about a two inch window. Gets it inside the goalie's ear. That's amazing placement by Lampert. Huge goal for the Pioneers. 
game of Muckle. Nasso comes away with it, gets it checked away. Mercurio now ready to run. Let's see what happens now. Clock at an even seven minutes. This is something Mick Kelly has rarely seen today. He's behind the goal on a short stick. And they quickly remedy that. And you'll notice Duke quickly sent defender number 44. Jake Wilson. Jake Wilson. They just made a very easy switch as Denver was subbing. Communicating. Nice job. Connell gets a little bit of step and scores. Denver rolling heavy like dancing in high Smith. Oh. We talked about Connell. He's a Canadian. Wants to get back to his strong hand. This is just a power move. And he really hardly has any hand freedom, if you will, but watch how he gets his shot off so quickly. Boom. And with pace. With pace. Another guy, there's another goal that comes from a lot of practice. And Duke is now double polling the face-off wings, which is an interesting strategy, Bob. Well, it's a really nice adjustment because they haven't been doing very well on the face-off. St well, Stathic has <laughs> moved. <laughs> he jumped early Maybe. and they had the two pole ready. Nice adjustment by the Duke coaching staff. Even though the two poles didn't affect that, <laughs> yeah. maybe their presence did. So Wada pushes it behind. And this is Denenza. So Wada. out for Dyson Williams. Yes. I think Zawada's looking out for Dyson Williams. Pass intended for O'Neal. There's Naso and Stathic is stuck on the field trying to create that five on five situation. You see Naso stepping out here on the side. Stathic has to play him. And here's Naso. Stathicus. A couple face off guys. And Unfamiliar territory. Zawada sweeps across, gets the shot off, goes wide. Six seconds on the shot clock, but they get a. They reset the shot clock, Bob. So we're guessing Klima caught a piece of that. Very interesting. Seven six. Now your score four fifty three to go. O'Neal moves it up top to Papendick. Papendick righty sweep behind to O'Neal. Now to Zawada. This is Denenza. Dean mm -hmm. Benedetto doing a great job on him. And Denver's elected to double pole the middies. Balsamo's got one. Denenza's got one, and they're shorting Dyson Williams on the crease. Pass to O'Neal is low. He bears down, shot goal. Brendan O'Neal doing Brendan O'Neal things. Say it with your chest, son. A hundred percent reason to remember the name. That's just clutch. <laughs> Big, strong, and extremely talented. In this program, he's listed at 6'2", 225. He might be a little bigger than that. He might be a lot bigger than that. Much like his very first goal of the game, watch, he just pulls his way inside that defenseman. The defenseman tries to body him into the crease and is incapable of doing that. O'Neal's just too strong. And Duke goes right back to a two-goal lead. Stathicus Nasso back at the face-off dot. Mercurio tries to hit it off a Duke player, and I still think oh, they're going to give it to Duke. My opinion means, like John Kruger Mellencamp, my opinion means nuts. Well, the game, I think, after a slow first half has uh, delivered some good stuff here in the second half. Brendan O'Neill, man, when he gets that ball and puts his head down, he is getting to the area of operations 
He's flying right into the war zone. Five goals in the first half. We have nine so far in this half. If my math serves me correctly. I'm not going to check your I know it's a little late in the day for you, Bob. We're going to let the math go. McAdory, quick as a hiccup. Gets his defender hung up. And this is really a tough spot for the Denver defenders. Again, Dyson Williams is, oh, he, he, he made a mistake there, I believe. I don't know what The clock. shot clock was, oh, great timeout by Coach Danowski saving what? that possession. <laughs> McAdory did not recognize that there was 30 seconds left in the shot clock and threw it over in the corner. Slot bail, bailed him out with a big ground ball. Very interesting turn of events right there, but a big ground ball and a great timeout. Coach Danowski, he's not a rookie. Zawada will inbound, guarded by Jimmy Freehill. And he immediately gets Freehill hung up. This is not the recipe for success for Denver, but there's only 11 seconds on the shot clock, so Zawada's gonna have to fish or cut bait. Comes out right, he roll dodge, and has the goalie at his mercy, and buries it. Beautiful move by Zawada. It looked like he was gonna be stuck back there without anything happening. He drives hard up to his strong hand, plants his foot, and inside rolls the defender, who has no help on the inside because Duke's done a great job occupying everybody without the ball. Nobody to slide, Zawada's got all day to fake the goaltender and uh, stretch it to three. Stretch it to three. It's an uphill climb from here, big time for Denver. And so wins it back to himself and gets tripped. That is a, uh, not a great turn of events for the Denver folks, nor the Duke folks, as Nassau is staying down right now. Might be lumber. Hope oh, not a twisting. I just think he, you know, that stick got tangled up into his uh, feet. Here's Duke with a, I think this is a uh, one minute penalty booker for a trip. So let's see what the ref's calling here. I think they already made it. He made that call, one minute. Duke's got ample time, and it's really hard to be aggressive when you're down a man, especially against the talent level that Duke's has on the field right now. A lot of times you see referees downgrade that. At this point of the game, they'll downgrade it to a hold, where it's a 30-second. But no such luck, as Duke will now get it to McAdory and Denhensa. There's skill everywhere you look. Tyson Williams, and here's Brendan O'Neill, Zawada. <laughs> <laughs> McAdory, Williams, Denenza, Balsamo, uh, pretty impressive uh, extra man offensive yeah. group. A lot of kids who played in that All-American senior game, I can tell you that much. If you want to rep your region, get to that in class tryout. I think Duke's content to let this extra man run its course and possibly eat up uh, almost all 80 seconds. And the penalties expired inside feed, shot goal. When it rains, it pours. Great Abe Lincoln's mullet. Well, this Dyson will go Williams. down as an even up goal because yeah. the penalty was up. Of course, it still takes about 10 seconds, seven, eight seconds for the guy to get in, checking up. And Dyson Williams does a beautiful job stepping to this ball, fed on the inside, turns his shoulders, and we talked about it a bunch. Dyson Williams with the ball and his stick in front of the goal. You know, he can pretty much pick out wherever he wants that shot to go. And Bob, you coached the game for so long, you know as well as anyone. Momentum's a huge part of the sport, but momentum's like the wind. You can't see it, but you sure as heck can feel it. And Denver just grabbed it. Mick Kelly, shot goal. Mick Kelly, what a great play by Mick. Listen to yourself churn. 
You've seen a couple really nice roll dodges today for you guys just looking at this, maybe younger players who are learning uh, the skills of dodging from split dodging to roll dodging. Watch this, Mick Kelly absorbs the pressure. Watch, steps hard on his left foot, turns back to his strong hand, gets him free. Beautiful bounce shot. It's not over yet. Cal Gerard from Manhasset in to take the face off for Duke. Stathicus wins that quickly back to Mick Kelly. 109 to go, three goal game. They need to go. Here's Silstrup. He gets it root to quick. Shot never made it. Jameson now with an absolutely insane save in tight. Noah Talk Manning about. picks up that loose ball on the crease, does the right thing. Beautiful bounce shot. Jameson up to the task and a better save. He has had a day today for a freshman out of Conestoga. His mom, Nancy, has to be proud of her young man today. 30 seconds now. And an empty netter is Duke. Sorry, Denver in the 10 man ride. The big, strong Brennan yeah. O'Neill. Denver's forced to obviously pull the goaltender to try to get the ball on the ground, chasing all over the field. Brendan gets his hands free, open goal, and he elects to shoot. I think he puts the, uh, the nail into this one. Yeah, they're almost trying to come out of the faceoff in a 10-man ride. Naso's back. I love the way Stathicus chases those loose yep. balls when he loses the draw. Great feet inside, unable to be handled, and they're gonna say it was touched by Denver. Brendan O'Neill with his third of the day. Just, and he missed a lot of the game with taking care of himself. Clock now at 10. And Sloat take it for a spin. And Sloat will run it out. And Duke, they certainly found a way to respond after losing 10-4 to four to Syracuse. They 11-7 over Denver.